Hello and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Vanilla Super Flat Survival. And I have finally completed my automatic AFK cobblestone generator, which is amazing. And because now I can get tons of cobblestone. I did not have to do much tweaking, I just forgot that I placed the torch right here because my uh, dropper was standing somewhere right here, but instead I moved it like right over here. Uh, I also redid the covering of it right here. Uh, now, this side of the covering is also acting as a cover and a crafting table. Right here is the chest where I will place how much cobblestone I get and just general pickaxes and stuff like that. Uh, right here is uh, the crafting table to craft um, stone pickaxes or whatever I might need to fill up this dropper right here. And right here is the chest where I'm gonna dump my inventory because this automatic uh, cobblestone genera uh, generator requires you to empty your inventory and fill it up with cobblestone. So, And I, in addition to that, I also filled up th all the droppers with stone pickaxes this one with stone pickaxes and this one with junk items in this case I this is one filled up with gunpowder because I completely don't need gunpowder and it's even more useless than rotten flesh so now let me demonstrate it real quick um, I just want to demonstrate it real quick and then I'm gonna cut filming and AFK a bunch of cobblestone so that's what I'm planning to do so I'm gonna just take some cobblestone with me right here, just fill one up. I don't care that that's burning, it's gonna go out eventually. One thing that's kinda bad with this is that uh, it does not, you can't really eat while AFK, so I guess that's the drawback of it, so. Uh, anyways, I'm just placing all this, uh, who cares, I'm just gonna dump it all in there like that. Um, and then after that, I'm gonna fill up my whole inventory with cobblestone except for one slot. So, then right here's my temporary chest for all the stuff like that. And now I'm ready to FK, so let's hope this works. Press the button, and then go like that. Um, okay, I think that it did not work. Oh, yep, this time it failed. As you can see, the the um, gunpowder went out right here, and that wasn't supposed to happen, so apparently this whole thing failed. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to dump that back in here, grab the gunpowder, uh, fill it up. There's actually a very small chance that it fails, and of course it did have to fail while filming, because it always happens like that. So, okay. Now this time I'm sure it will work. Oh, there we go. And after that, I go to options, controls, I change that to space. And then I and then I basically press space and then after that, I can now place a heavy object on my space bar and then that's how I'm going to mine. And eventually I should have a crap ton of cobblestone because every time my pickaxe ends the timer will tick and basically give me another pickaxe to mine with so i tested this and this could be left alone for ab approximately two or so hours i think and i'm gonna get a lot of cobblestone from this so yeah i'm gonna uh afk like that and come back later and show you the results Hello and welcome back. I have mined some more cobblestone and I do have quite a bit of lot. Oh, gotta extinguish that real quick. Uh, I did get quite a bit of cobblestone. I did just get a bit more and if you're probably noticing that there are no doors in any of the uh, places that there were doors before and I'll explain that real quick now right here's my bull cobblestone section. This is all the cobblestone that I have. I did use up some and I did uh, complete a lot of off camera work. I did a lot of preparations for getting villagers into uh, here, getting a villager breeder done, getting an iron farm done, and to do that I had to go around and destroy all of the doors, all of the wooden doors. I had to destroy all the wooden doors in my house. I had to destroy all of the wooden doors right here and I'm thinking about replacing them with an uh, with iron doors so as I'm going to replace these with iron doors as well as soon as I get an iron farm going I can uh, start replacing these doors with iron doors just because they're uh, it's kinda annoying to have them without doors and 
I also had to break all of the doors in all of my outpost stations, so... Let me just break that really quick. I, like I said, uh, I did also have to remove all of the... Oh, that broke real quick. Okay. I also did have to, um, uh, take out all of the doors in that village over there, and that is to make sure that when I get my iron farm in here, that the villagers don't count these exterior doors as more doors, and that might break my, uh, iron farm and my, um breeder and i have already started construction of how i'm going to take the villagers out somewhere and uh okay let me see now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to grab some more cobblestone as construction material for our breeder and stuff like that i'm also going to have to encase a large area to make sure that slimes and mobs don't get into my villager breeder and like I said before, I did have to replace all of these doors. There used to be wooden doors, but I replaced these with fence gates just so they would not interfere. And these are great also because zombies can't break through them. And I think it happened one time to me that a zombie actually broke through one of these doors. But as soon as I get enough resources, I will um, add an iron door with a pressure plate right here and a button right here so I could get an easier. Now I did decide to have my to grab the villagers from the northern village over there. I did also discover a village south right there and it's a bit closer but it's kinda slanty so I have to go sideways and I did not really like that but this village is kind of really um, in one direction and that way it's much easier to transport the villagers to and from the areas. I also really liked how this is the area where the uh where uh my base kind of stops i'm not able to see the base anymore since it kind of uh unloads and around here is the area where i can't see neither the village in front of me and right here we can see the village and if i run back there a few blocks i'm gonna start to see my base and right here is kind of the very midpoint which is y negative 100 this is where i'm gonna have my villager breeder station right here uh, of course, I gotta make sure that there's no slime chunks down here, which is gonna be a pain. I did get lucky with the construction of my uh, base in which I was a spared and was able to build a large area that is not on a slime chunk. I haven't, haven't had any problems with slimes. And you may be wondering what this huge ditch here for is. And this is how I'm going to transport the villagers right here. So I'm going to have water streams right there, and then they're going to transport the villagers right here. And I'm going to have a tube that goes up here and... Uh, transport them inside the breeder right here that I'm going to build is soon um, but to do that I first have to build all of the water things and let me just eat some carrots just so I can run real quick and it took me a crap ton of time to mine this whole thing out because even though it might not be that far it is three by three blocks so I mean it's a uh, three blocks tall so i did have to do quite a bit of mining i used up a bunch of shovels but i did get a lot of dirt from that which is nice i can use that as building material or whenever i need dirt or something but for the breeder i will use cobblestone so yeah and to prove it to you that i actually did mine uh this i'm gonna go into statistics and show you the items so let me see blocks so i mined this uh I mined dirt 2,737 times, I used it 1,642 times, and if we go inside uh, items, we can see that I used a shovel 2,984 times and crafted it 132 times. So that's, uh, the majority of that number is probably what I used to build this ditch right here and I made sure that it's three blocks deep and not just two blocks deep because if it is two blocks deep then the villagers might be able to climb out so the idea here is that I have these signs right here and then as you can see if I do try to swim up here I'm not able to swim up and out of here now I gotta really be careful because as uh, soon the slimes are going to overrun this place so um, it is going to be difficult to build but actually it is fairly easy to build this uh, water stream as long as I don't really go up too much because 
because then the slimes won't be able to touch me. So uh, I'm gonna put the villagers in here, and to demonstrate, I'm going to just press the the space bar. I'm just pressing the space bar. I'm not doing anything, and this is how it's going to go. The, this is how the villagers are gonna go. They might not go really quickly. I I could have puts this uh, water streams closer together, but it gets the job done, and that's what I exactly need. So right here, I'm going to demonstrate it real quick. I'm going to have to put, this is where I put a, a sign right here to make sure that the water does not flow back here, and this is the sign just to make sure that the water does not flow back. So then I just place another water source right here, and it extends right there. Now, one thing that makes this so difficult is because I only have one bucket. So, I have to make infinite water sources somewhere right here. I, I just make infinite water sources, and then I go right here. I put some signs right here, and I extend it right like so. And there we go. So, uh... And then what I do is I just run out somewhere right here, and then I find a good area to build another infinite water source. I put it like so, I block it off, I put the water right there, and then uh, I run back to my water f source to grab some more water, uh, and then place another source of water here to make it an infinite source of water, and then take more water from there. And it's an extremely repetitive process, and I'm going to have to do this for the remainder of the path. And I've barely gotten any far, and that's how far we need to go. I can barely even see where that is. And the slimes are piling up like crazy, which makes this even harder. But they can't touch us since it's a one by one opening. And inside the one by one opening, only the very smallest slimes can get through, so this acts as a nice shield for us. Um, now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut filming right here and uh, get back to you as soon as I'm done. Oh, actually, I think that this episode has been long enough. I did do a ton of off-camera work. It might have been short, but uh, I think this is where I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. This is my Kralix. Uh Wow, that's lines. And I'm out. See you all in the next video.